You've decided to um, have a mixed mode building and you need to work out how big the windows should be and where they should be. So here's the answer. The answer is your windows in Brisbane anyway, where we know we're trying to keep out the bulk of that heat. Uh, unlike a lot of buildings you see in Brisbane and those buildings we saw at the end of the last section, which was fully glazed, um, you really, for good thermal performance, may not be architecturally uh, what you want, but for good thermal performance, you want about 10% of the floor area as glazing. So typically that means, depending on how big your floor plate is relative to the facade, that means you might have windows with a sill at about 900 and uh, 1200 high windows and then more structure. Um, compare that to a typical building, which has got a typical modern building, Brisbane, which has got uh, a, a curtain facade, so they build all their concrete slabs, drop down a, a glass facade, and it's nearly all glazing. Um, can have some spandrel in there, but that kind of building um, needs air conditioning nearly year round. So it's not a matter of just uh, opening up windows on a, in a building that doesn't work well passively and it's not shaded passively, because it's just going to be too hot. Um, if you've got sun coming in the windows and um, it's 24 degrees outside, inside without air conditioning it might be 35 degrees. Um, so you need, to, you need to get that ratio right if you want the building to work passively. So if we've got a really deep floor plan, logic would tell us it's going to be hard to get a good breeze going across that and there's some rules of thumb uh, which have come out from CFD modelling, which says that uh, if you have <coughs> one, one unit of height at the facade, then you can have five units of width if you have two openings. So um, we'll have a look at this uh, diagram, should make it clear where we have single side of ventilation, we're going to halve that. So we've got, for example, uh, facade in this room which is three meters high we can come in two and a half times that in a single sided situation so our room can be um, seven and a half meters deep and we'll still get a bit of circulation in so that's pretty deep because the facades pretty high uh, if we have a double sided ventilation situation which is ideal but often hard to achieve you can extend that out to about five times so the um, first thing to do when, you, when you're considering making a building mixed mode is to well to work out the floor area work out the window area just as a, as a base and then say okay where am I going to put my windows because uh, the winds coming from here so I want to pick those up and you need windows on the other side because ventilation is driven by a pressure difference. So ideally in and out. Then you work out what your floor to floor level is, uh, typically 2.7 or three meters and say, well, uh, two and a half times that or five times that, depending on what you've got. That's where I think I'm gonna get good ventilation into the space. So if you've got a city tower, which has a floor to floor of three meters, um, you might be, and you've got double sided ventilation, you can go in say 15 metres, but often floor plates, uh, you know, might be 50 metres uh, for a floor plate. So there's no way that that air is going to get through all those um, pressure drops, which are all the things we see in a room. Um, so you need to come up with alternative solutions. So in a lot of buildings that are mixed mode, you'll see atriums, which essentially break up that central core, which is really hard to ventilate get that out and you've got double sided ventilation with relatively thin rooms and the building that we're sitting in has exactly that. So it's got ventilation in front of me and behind me and it's got an atrium behind me so um, when the windows are open uh, we've, we're probably following that rule uh, almost exactly. We've probably got about 15 metres and about 3 metres. Um, so that's your openings. The um, Imagine you've done that, you've said okay we've, we've arranged the floor plate such that we've got openings here and here, we've sized them, uh, we've, we've, we've not made the floor plate too deep, um, 
Now we need to shade those, those windows. So as I mentioned before, if your building's uh, air conditioned, you get a kind of a free card in the sense that uh, you don't need to spend a lot of time with good passive design because you can just whack in a massive air conditioner, which is you know, not great for your running costs or the planet, but it does work. For a mixed mode building, you can't do that. Um, you need to design a good passive um, building that works well when there's no air conditioning running. And that's going to have the additional benefit that when the air conditioning is running, it's going to have to work less hard. So for air conditioning loads, it's broken up into a number of things, cooling that outside air down, all the heat in the space, the, the people moving around, the computers, um, and then heat coming in from the outside. And of all those different aspects, solar gain, sun coming in the windows, is the biggest one. And it's often the biggest by a huge margin, particularly um, in the early morning <coughs> and the late afternoon when you've got sun coming in, you've got about a thousand watts per square meter, which is equivalent to one of those plug-in bar heaters. So every square meter of clear glazing that's unshaded you've got, you've got a bar heater just sitting there blasting in heat and that heat will come all the way into the, the space if you let it. So what you want to do is use external shading because if you put blinds, which we'll talk about in a minute, but if you just put blinds on the inside, the heat will come in, it'll hit the blind, it'll heat up the blind, it'll rise, the air will rise, and it's already in the space. So that air's, that hotness, the heat's already got into the space. Compare that to having external shading, which um, this building has. The heat hits the outside and then just blows away because it's in the, in the normal air. So how do we design that shading? Um, it can be a bit tricky and there's all sorts of specialists. There's, there's a number of ways you can do it. And it's well worth your time um, learning at least the basics of good shading design because it's going to serve you through your whole architectural career. You only have to learn it once um, and you won't always be dependent on others to do a detailed shading calc for you. So there's a number of ways to do it. There's, um, you can essentially just Google it and say, what do I need for Brisbane? And there's tables that you can look up. That's an easy way. Um, slightly more interesting and sophisticated, there's software such as Ecotect and other ones, some of which have free licenses for students um, or are indeed just free. And you can put in a, a basic model. And as we can see in some of these slides, you can see where it's going to map where the sun is and you can just look where the sun's coming in. Um, the other way to do it, which is the kind of the, the, the detailed way, um, is just use maths. So it's using, uh, in the old days, this is what they used to do before computers. So the old days being 20 years ago, they got a sun path diagram which they printed out for every location. They got an angle, they used a bit of simple trigonometry to work out how deep the shade needed to be. And you only needed to do that once for every location that you worked in. So you had a little table and you always knew what to use. So that is that's a bit detailed, but um, if you're interested, that's well worth spending the time learning how to do that. Um, you can take it to a pretty detailed level, so a lot of my work is involved in doing this detailed chatting analysis, which we can see here, where you can work out how, exactly how much heat is going to be on each surface, exactly when the sun's going to come in, um, how much daylight you're going to get in throughout the year. Um, and those, <coughs> those kind of analyses are really good when you have an unusual building shape. If you've just got a box, you should be able to work out how big the overhang is yourself. Um, and indeed, you can just walk around in summer and go, well, that's a metre. It's a two metre high window. It's shading the window well. OK, well, my shade's going to have to be about a metre um, to start with. You can also see as you walk around that some facades are a lot harder to shade than others, as you probably know already. So to cut to the chase, this is, if you did all that shading analysis, and I think I've been doing it for 10 years now, this is this one slide is what it boils down to. On the north, have an overhang. Doesn't need to be huge. Um, 
you have a relatively small overhang, maybe half a metre for a medium sized window. That lets sun in in the winter. You don't want a huge amount for commercial buildings. You want a little bit for houses, but commercial buildings have a lot of heat load. Let's a bit of sun in in the winter and it blocks it all out in the summer, so it's great. Northern facades are really easy to do. They're cheap, they're comfortable, excellent. Southern facades, also pretty good. You, in Brisbane at least, you very rarely get direct sun, only in the very early morning and very late afternoon. So you can have a fair bit of glazing. Um, don't go crazy because you still have heat loss, but um, you can have a fair bit of glazing for daylighting and views. East and the West, nightmares. You really want to avoid them. Um, often what will happen is that you get uh, designed into a corner where you've got an East facade, you've got a West facade, you've got views and you just tear your hair out trying to find something that's going to work cost effectively. There are solutions but the best solution is to have no windows, probably not practical. So have small windows and then have operable shading. So you, nowadays it's a lot cheaper, they're more common operable shading which moves up and down with the motor and you can um, change the angle. Um, they're pretty expensive still so put a lot of glazing on your north and the south, a little bit of glazing on the east, really absolute minimal on the west because it's just baking hot particularly in Brisbane. Um, the other issue not related to energy use with these kind of facades is glare. So glare is separate to heat gain and glare is more annoying for people and if they get glare they will complain and complain because you can't see anything on your computer monitor. So from these pictures you can see that even a little bit of late afternoon sun coming in is really problematic. So that's why we have good shading but generally good shading is not going to block out 100% of the sun. So you'll in addition have blinds which then raises the problem of well what do you do if you've got your windows open and your blinds down. So that's something to think about. Okay, avoid some pitfalls. Um, and some of the bigger pitfalls are acoustics. And these are things that people will bring up and say, oh, we can't do it, it's too hard. It's gonna be too noisy. So when you're thinking about noise, you can easily get um, some guidelines for the maximum DBA levels that, that you need to achieve but also think about the quality of noise. So in, on a campus environment, it's usually quite pleasant, but, and in that, we saw that picture where it had the glare, that was at Manly, and there was nice boat noises. It's pretty loud, like, if you got a sound meter, it was pretty loud, but they were really nice, so no one really minded. But if you've got horns beeping, and sirens going, and a lot of variation in the noise, it can be a problem. Some of the solutions are to have windows that don't open down to pick up the road noise, but to open up. You've got to close them when it rains, but they're hopper windows. Um, and in the worst case, if uh, it is really a problem, the good thing about mixed mode is that you can always shut the windows and turn on the aircon uh, if you've got an important meeting that needs to be quiet. Some of the other pitfalls are insects. So uh, particularly on, on this campus, there's a lot of insects, so a lot of the buildings that you see around the campus just have insect screens. They're pretty, um, they're pretty difficult to see, even from the inside. Um, and you can even get uh, pretty cheap ret retractable screens now. So usually that's not a, a problem, but it is something you have to think about. It's usually not a problem above about the fifth story as well. Um, the other thing you can do, and they've used that in some buildings here, is to use special lights which don't attract insects as much, because uh, they usually come out on those um, in the late afternoon when the lights are starting to be turned on. Uh, and finally, security is something to think about. If you are on the ground floor and you want to have the building open to cool it down at night, which is called night purge and generally a good thing, um, it generally doesn't happen because people get worried about security so they don't open the windows. Uh, so you need to think about how you're going to manage that. Some of the solutions are to have bars on the windows, which is not great, um, or to have very high level windows which are not accessible but still vent the air out. So you might have a, a section with two, two sets of windows, one that can be operated at night and then the ones that can be operated during the day. Alright, so that wraps it up and we'll get on to our last section in a minute.